ganz vor dem, er sieht aus. Y'all excited? Uh-oh. <laughs> Were y'all awake? Oh, it's just late to pray, y'all. Hey, man, thank you uh, for this opportunity again. Uh, Brother Nixon, thank you for the trust you have in us. And we definitely thank uh, God for this moment, amen. It's a moment in time where God is choosing to do some good stuff and to end the earth. My assignment this morning, I'm getting an iPad up. I'll be talking about stewardship. Amen. I used to tell her, hey, the bride by my side, looking good as she should. Yeah. Look better than yeah. back in Hollywood. And yeah. with that girl named Beyonce, I had nothing on my fiance. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Uh, uh, Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this opportunity to share with you this morning that you put in my heart. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing back the thing that I've studied, that I've read, that I've heard, and that you've spoken in my heart. That you will bring it back at the right moment, at the right time. That you will glorify Jesus. That's our name this morning. Jesus is glorified. And all that we do, that we honor him. And we dare not judge his glory. Because all glory belongs to Jesus. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, my assignment this morning is, is, is on financial stewardship. Uh, I have to saying, this is saying I have. Everything is God's by ownership. Everything is ours by stewardship. And we enjoy it by fellowship. So as, as we are. Uh, I have been entrusted with the ministry and the mysteries of the kingdom. Uh, we got to realize that it's not really ours. Uh, we just a manager over it. And so, therefore, as we begin to look at what God has entrusted us with, it's a great thing. And so, there again, I said on last night, I said again today, this weekend is about elevate eight. It's about helping, helping that the the vision that God has placed in our brother's heart that we that we become uh, 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 become yeah, that we become a faithful steward over it and and that uh, uh, we join forces and, and and watch God be glorified in the earth through this particular avenue. So my first scripture this morning, first Corinthians chapter number four, and look at verse one through three. Apostle Paul says. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required as stewards that one be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or uh, by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. So the Apostle Paul said now, that we are stewards, a uh, stewards of a manager or an overseer. And that means now that, 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 that we will, uh, you know, that we have been counted faithful because God invests in faithful people. Paul told Timothy that you that, that you've been example to the brother in word and deed and spirit and faith, you know, that, 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 that people will look at you and see that you're faithful. And, and so when we look at when we look at that at, at, at the Role of pastors and the apostles of the five fold ministry, and, and, and know that we've been, we've been given a, a great task, a, a great work to do, and we've got to give an account of this work. So that, that's what we just gave purpose that we've got. You know, the brother mentioned the time, you know, that's a, that's a, uh, people who abuse the time, you know, uh, but we still teach on No matter how many folks are abusing, no matter how many folks mess up, we still teach on it because it's right. It's the word of God. We dare not take down the cause that people don't understand. Yeah. We still declare the word of God. So, so it's stewardship, and that's the thing we're talking about. Stewardship is about responsibility. Response or responsibility. So in Luke 16, and verse 10 through 12, 10 through 12, he says this. He who is faithful in, in 
he who is faithful in what is the least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, verse 11, therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous manner, who will commit to you or to your trust the true riches? And verse 12 says, and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? So we look at the responsibility that, that we've been given to uh, here, and, and we look at, you know, like, hey, the, the, uh, I've been the vision been given to the man of God from God, and therefore how you handle that, he, he will have to give an account for that, and then and we as partners, we must give an account how we have him hold up that all the arms up. So we can commit today and fall by ways out tomorrow. Uh, I believe that's what happened in church. People commit for short term, short term commitments. And I, I, I believe you ought to, you ought to sit in general that we're going to commit for an X number of months, X number, number of years, and, and fulfill the contract. Because I believe now that if, 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 if I can't help him push your vision, God can help me get my vision off the ground. He just said that. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you your, your, uh, his true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? So, so God looks at my, at my responsibility uh, to him and to this ministry, to this vision, and he judged me accordingly. Because I made a commitment to support elevating. I made a commitment that I, I, I would lift it up, I would pray for it, and I talk tonight about partnership. I hope you come out tonight with my partnership. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this, the, the slow roll tonight, and I'm gonna really reveal seek the partnership because we this to go on partnership. Uh, I, I will also not seek it with the bubble because we're not the partners. Luke five, he's talking. So, 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 God said that if I'm faithful. And, and they're responsible with this ministry that he can trust me for more. So I, I, I believe God looks at how we handle stuff in the present and see if we can be trusted with more. If, if he can't trust me with a little bit, he sure can't trust me with a lot. Stewardship, number one, responsibility. Number two is accountability. Accountability. God gives you that which you can be trusted with. You know, uh, you all know if you if you if, if you yeah, I like to say something different, but if you're in the ministry and you're concerned about souls, you know Randolph Monkey. Well, Randolph Monkey uh, had the vision that all the Africans shall be saved. Now, you know, now, now God didn't give that vision to me. Now he ran hard monkey and moved to America, I think, and he said, now all Americans shall be saved. Thank God coming to America. Well, well, God looked at and uh, uh, Brother Brown and Rocky and, and, and said, he can handle that. I'll put that vision in him to save Africa. Well, now, God did not put that vision in him because he understood I can handle that. He gives me that which I can be trusted with. He doesn't put more on me as uh, uh, we say that I can bear. So God looks at you and he looks at your ability, he looks at your talents, he looks at your gift, and he gives you a part of it which you have to so we can't be judged or be, be jealous of, of another man's gift or another man's talent. Matthew 25 and, and, and 15. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on the journey. Now he said, now, he had three stories. They get one five talents, one two talents, and one one talent. And he went on a journey. Story told, just sidetracking for a moment. Story told about uh, Jesus going back to heaven, and the angel said, What about the ministry that you left on earth? And, he, and Jesus said to the angel, I left it in the hands of 12 men. And the angel said, well, what if I don't carry it out? He said, I have no plan. So what has God placed in your hand that he is trusting you with? Is it in good hands? In other words, 
Can Jesus rest in heaven know that I'll put this ministry in the hands of Willie Taylor and, and, and he's going to carry it out to the gym? Can God trust you with the ministry with the gift with the talent that he placed in you? Is it in good hands or, or is it in danger of falling by the wayside? We've got to give an account of the ministry that he's given us. I think we'll do it with all diligence. That we're concerned about this ministry that we, that we because I believe that we're going to stand before the judgments in the Christ and give an account of all the things that's done in our lives. Mm. I'm a firm believer of that. Too bad to try to persuade me otherwise. I'm convinced. So, back to my story now. Give an account of stewardship that is coming. Follow me in Luke 16 and verse 2. The steward, uh, in Luke 16, the steward uh, was in charge of the master's stuff and, and, and he got messed up and now and, and he got back to the master. Hey, you're a good steward and you messed up. And he'd been, he'd been embezzled in front and he'd been, been, been slack on the job. So the manager called him in and verse 2 says, So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of the stewardship, for you can no longer be can no longer be steward. Man, don't you don't you dread that? If the Lord comes and says, "I know I can't trust you anymore," you know, I, I, I pastor a great church, an awesome church in North Carolina called Word of Life, and and and, and I do the best I can with that church. You know, uh, uh, I don't I don't slack on the job, and uh, I'm, I'm diligent in my duty, and I'm diligent in my craft. I want to make sure I'm the best pastor that I can be. Because I know one day I'll be the scripture in a minute in Hebrew 13 and 17, and we've got to give an account of this. No longer can I say I'm a pastor. And then just flow around, driving big cars and eating good meat. But now I've got to give an account of it. So, so I, I look at it and I say, yeah, thank God for all this you're doing, but, but in this trip, this, this weekend that we're here, you know, it costs a lot of money to come here. A lot of money to come here. We definitely don't waste this time. Yeah. Yeah. And take it for granted. We don't care about the end of the sale because we're on assignment. We are ambassadors of the Christ. We've been sent for heaven for a message that it's time to be a good steward. What God has put in your hand? I'm not going to the end of the sale. I grew up on your receipts. Okay, I cut my teeth with that. When we started out of church, it was years before somebody came to our church. Yeah. Every now and then somebody would pop in, but I thought God told me to go to North Carolina. My original home was in South Georgia. He said, you do go to North Carolina. That's where that phrase comes. I'll show you as you go. Because I'm going to obey God. I say, God, why am I going to North Carolina? I was in the mansion, as I thought. And I will not be a pastor. Because if you told me about the home, you're going to pass the church. I'd have been in the show people today. God ain't like pastors. I saw how people would be the pastor. And so he said, I'll show you as you go. When I get to North Carolina, he began to tell me I need to start a church. And now I have to be obedient to him. That was a sign to me. He put people under my kids. I dare not manipulate my people. I dare not abuse them. I, I, I don't sell stuff. I, I don't bring any shots into my ministry. You know what I'm Because I got to give an account of that flock. I'm a steward over there. If you're number one sheep, you got to give an account of one. What is God giving you that you slack on the job with? You say you give an account of your ministry, give an account of your, uh, 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 your job, your assignment. Man, you know, he said, you can no longer be a steward. Can you imagine being fired by God? I gave you the assignment, but you dropped it. Now I can't trust you for nothing else. That's bad. I don't want that on my spiritual resume. Yeah. That I flunked on the job. Be a good steward. Romans 14, 20. See, God is already know you. He knows what you've been. So, so he, he didn't give me the, the assignment to say Africa. And I love Africa. Uh, the brother said, uh, 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 by Tim, I will, uh, we have a pastor there. His 
called Word of Faith International. Thanks to family, he's doing a great job. He, he, he's doing all the work in, in different regions. Uh, we have about 30 churches over there. We we'll see over in, in, in uh, Liberia, in Malovia. And uh, we have some churches here in Illinois. Uh, church of uh, all over in Bangladesh. And some in India. So, so, so. But I don't think that we're planning. I don't know. So we got churches over here, churches over there. We go, that's, that's, that's a stewardship now. I got to give it a count of that. So everybody go, I owe me 5,000 members. Okay? How about you treating the five? Yeah. Are you faithful with the five that God's giving you? Yeah. Did you feed them like you feed the 5,000? Yeah. <laughs> this uh, there was a gospel singer back in the U.S. and uh, he came to a town about a few miles from where we live and, and he brought his bus down and he traveled to the auditorium and his sister A and his side and said, uh, go see how many people in there. And he came back and gave the account of how many people in there. He threw out a few, uh, threw out a few CDs and said, let's go home. It wasn't enough people for him to perform. But I'm the one who gave him that assignment. If God gave you the, 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 the ability to sing and, and, and spread the gospel through song, but not how many people show up, you show up. See, see, it's, it's not, it's not our job to feel the people. Our job is to get the word of God and God will feel the people. Yes. Let me be faithful all over all the word and then put it in my heart and give that out and then he will take care of the rest. Yes. I'm not concerned about who God who love God. I'm concerned about and have I done all that God put in my heart to do. That, that's, now I gotta be to do oh, this is ministry. Oh, this is you. So it'll be in Romans 14 to it. Y'all okay? Y'all okay? okay. Romans 14 to so then each of us shall give account of itself to God. <laughs> There's a day of reckoning coming where you've got to give an account of yourself. You've got to make sure you keep the records what God does. He keeps the most. So therefore we just say, well, whatever will be, will be. No, 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 we're different about this stuff. Now the scripture of Hebrews verse 17, this is what I miss a reference to. He talks to the, to the sheep. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive. That's a good master lesson right there. For they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them also do it with joy and not with greed, for that will be unprofitable to you. So he says to the church members, Obey the pastor. Obey those who have a dog over you. Because that man of God, that woman of God, got to give an account of their soul. And that's why I said earlier, it doesn't matter if you have 5,000, 5,000, there's five. We're going to be held accountable. That's why we have to be faithful with what God sends us. And if I'm faithful in the least, I'll be faithful in the much. If we can be faithful in the lean times, when, when, when there's a few people in, 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 in our church, then how can we expect God to run the thousands? If we can't, if, if we can't handle the little handful, how can we handle the mess? I think, I think sometimes people want to show off. I got 500 in my ministry. Okay, so what? That means more responsibility. That means more you got to give an account of. I, I have 5,000. How many you have? God knew. No, it's not about the numbers. It's about am I faithful to what God has put in my heart to do? Am I faithful? And I believe when I, when I prove myself faithful, then God watches, he watches my heart because God judges my heart, not my motives, uh, not my, my actions. So we, can, we, can, we, we can fake it because Jesus said this. They serve with the lips, but the heart is far from them. So we look at what God is doing and, 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 and see that God is moving greatly. First Peter 4 and 5. First Peter 4 and 5. They will give an account for him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So before you make these great decisions about what am I going to do, I think you first going to sit down and count the cost. I believe Elevate Aid is a good ministry to get involved with. I believe Brother Savannah uh, is a good steward over this ministry. 
I want to bring people squandering the fun that we send here. Amen? I can't get a good enough of it. I, I, I believe he'd I believe he, he, he be faithful to the vision to what God would bring in. Four things every steward knows. First thing, four things. Number one, number one, that four things that every steward knows. God owns everything, and he alone has the rights. God alone owns everything, and he has the rights to it. So we can't claim that. Number two, number two, out of the four things that every student knows, we are in, in the approval stage with the measure we have. That's a good idea. God's watching me and proving me where I am now. Am I faithful for no one God? No, I, I, I mentioned earlier that when we started our church in the building and the Bible was coming in. And all of a sudden, a uh, uh, few people came, and then we, we had a uh, Wednesday night service, and we go by the conference, being a lot of, you know, with other people. And so one of the ladies, she said, Pastor, ain't nobody talking, we might want to have a church at my house or your house. No. That's not what God told me to do. Yeah. No matter, no matter who comes, I'm, he's moving me now. If, if I can't get up and preach to get the jail, like I got thousands, it goes in the thousands of people. Prove the stage. That's a proof stage in, in your ministry, in, in your assignment, in your gifting, in your talent. That God said, I'm watching you how you count, handle this matter. Are you faithful in this matter? Yes. Yes. Because before he could put more in our hands, we had to be good stewards of both a little bit. Yes. First, uh, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians 4, look what Paul said. In verse 11 and verse 12. Paul said this. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. He said, I know how to be amazed, and, and I know how to abound in every way and all things. And I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. He said, now, watch this now, verse, verse 11. I have learned in whatever state. I think one, one, one problem we have in church, we're not content. Content doesn't mean to be, we're satisfied and I'm not going to do any more. No, he said, I'm, I am where I am without the brain. Yes. Okay, he said, what's it now? I learn, I learn. Learn is a process. So he said, through the process, I learn how to be content or to be stable right where I am without being like a, uh, Frustrated every now and then, uh, hitting them on the block back and forth. He said, I learned this. Okay, Paul, uh, how did you learn to take it? From 12, we answered that question. He said, I, 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 I learned about being amazed. I learned about bound. I learned it everywhere in all things. I learned it from, from, from what I suffered, what I experienced. I learned these things. And he thinks totally content. I, I'm leaving out of proof of stage. We're going to learn how to be content when God places us. You know, uh, I'm going to say that that way. Let me find another way to say what I want to say. Uh, yeah, good, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, who will come in over? I mentioned something about the long delay. I mean, we get to the airport and, and uh, we had a whole day. I mean, a whole day from we got there like uh, eight o'clock in the morning, and our uh, flight was leaving at ten twenty six a.m. and and, uh, and and that plane had to leave at six p.m. We sat there the whole day. So in that in that I learned to be content. I wasn't happy, but I wasn't complaining. No, no, I want to sit down all day, right? Hey, that line ain't no good. I'm not going to fly to that line anymore. No, I was content. Because I, I understood that was a time I could hear from God. No, no, no. No matter what state you're in, learn how to be content because God is thinking you in that state. But if you always, if you always yield to it, and I don't want to move it, and can't, can't stay, can't get it, you always be up and down, up and down, up and frustrated. So I believe we ought to learn how to be content. 
Because stewards, stewards, understand, okay, I don't have five talents, I got two talents. Let me stand in line with the two talents now and let me invest those two and be the best steward I can over two talents. Because you know the story, I want you to tell you again, so Matthew 25, when we were talking about the guy with all the talents, one, five, one, two, one, one, and one invested, two, one, one invested, and one another here. And the Lord came back to him, I give him a count, I'm going to give it to him. Let's get to the great day, y'all. It's also going to be a sad day. When we stand for the justice of Christ, let me say this, everybody who's in the justice of Christ, you're already saved, you're not going to hell, okay? There's not a judgment for sinners, there's a judgment for the righteous. That's where we get our reward. And, 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 uh, and, and so you look around, everybody got a crown to ship you. You don't want to go to heaven and be bareheaded in heaven for a journey, throughout a journey. Be me ask you a question. What did you do on earth? Nothing. You don't want to get in heaven. You want to have some kind of trophy or something on heaven, something to show. This is what I did. This is my reward. But do something to be faithful. The day of reckoning is coming. So the devil five talents. He would have invested in them. He got five more. Another one too, he got five more. And all he gave is he put the big old struggle. Man, you a hard man. I know that. So I want to hear your money. Here's your money. Here it is. And the master said, you know, I'm a hard man. Why you want to invest in money? <laughs> Take what you want to get. As I give to the one that took out. That is something. So God multiplies faithfulness. That's so good about that. So good. God multiplies faithfulness. If you're faithful as long as I'm going to add, I'm going to increase you. Three, four things that, that a steward knows here. A steward knows that the amount he starts with is not important. God is not focused on what we started with, but what we end up with. God is about increase. By English, we found a story in, uh, in John, uh, I think in 15, that you bear fruit, stage one. You bear more fruit, stage two. You bear more fruit, stage three. I'm going to give 100 US dollars, they're only going to ask 25 US dollars. Well, I'm going to tell them to do something. If I do less than that, I'm in disobedience. So all of those hills, he's going to speak to you uh, about your kingdom because I need to give this report to the kingdom of God because, because Jesus gave it. God the Father gave it. How do you want to give it out of here? And that's this supernatural gift. The supernatural gift. This is that you would give a precious. The precious seed. We see now that Abraham gave the precious seed. Hannah gave the precious seed. Mary gave the precious seed. Zachariah and Elizabeth. I believe 
he sent it for partners today. That's what I'm asking you, Mr. No, he sent it for partners today. Come and help us. And what's in that? And when they got the help leader with the fish, both should, both both begin to sink because they join forces. I think when we join forces with the departure of this ministry, we'll have so many souls that we can't count them all. Partnership. I make a beauty of Russia now by talking about partnership. It's important that we come together because we do more together than we can separate. Number two, God has in mind those who hurt you. God will let your enemies the more enough for them to see how you miss you. Yeah. We want God to kill the enemies. That's my right now, God. We also know, no, no, no. I'm going to let them live to see that I called you, that you're my chosen person, and I'm going to bless you, and they're going to watch you. I'm going to prepare a table for them because of their enemy. They can't do nothing about it. God bless you. Just be my just remain faithful. Be a good steward. God. Oh, 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 oh. Shut the head of those again. One of my favorite verses is Hebrews 6 and 10. God of God of righteousness will get your work and your labor love, which is shown for the same. And you yet you notice that right now. God doesn't forget what you do. I don't see like he does it until he goes out and don't know your name. But God got you on his calendar. Just be a faithful steward. Put in your hands in and watch God reward you tremendously. Right. That's why I prophesy to those who love this great country. God bless you. I pray, and I pray for South Africa before it got here. I, I pray that, 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 that this economy will turn. I don't know what your uh, political realm is and that kind of stuff, but I, I know God. I know God got to open up for this, for this region. I, 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 I'm concerned about West Africa because that's where we got a lot of work in West Africa. I'll be done. I'm going to go up this line. I'm just going to bless and bless. I'm going to time now where the top come down to the bottom of the road. We call it the law of mercy. I'll be done with the filter stuff now. So just remain faithful. I'm going to be going to struggle with a small, a long, hard journey, but the baby, the ride is about to be over. Number, number three said, God, God, God has you demand from those who give the you. Paul said, Alexander, come to me and give me what God got in mind those uh, who hear from you. There are, there are people who hear from you. They could have helped you, and they should have helped you, but they didn't. But don't become bitter because of the heaven. Don't become bitter. You just, you just get better. And you're going to learn that, that some people will always miss their assignments when they come and help you push the vision. God, you see, your vision is always bigger than you. If not, it's not much of a vision. But you need help with your vision. You need, you need a group with a vision. You need a goal. She no way there. You need a goal. And you need a guy. And then you need to go, you need to go, cheap old healthy, to get your vision going. You got to have a group, you got to have people come inside you. You got to, you, you, you got to have a goal. Where, where are we going? How do we get there? You got to have a guy. What's the guy I need to go by? How are we going to accomplish it? You got to accomplish a strategy. I got to get some plan of action. What's the plan of action? How are we going to make this thing happen? Then you need to go, some some goal. You need some cheap old healthy. You need some fun. You need some money. Now, this is why partnership is important to the young lady. No matter how big the vision, you've got the provision, it's just a vision, or just a dream on the shelf. And then God has, number four, God has those at home. First Samuel 30, 24. First Samuel 30, 24. Uh, the home of those who stayed and prayed for you when you went to fight the battle. The first Samuel you know the story. David, David goes out fighting whales and come out to Ziglag. So he decided to come and take his family, his sons, his daughters, and took everything. You know, let me for a moment. Don't lose your family trying to save the world. That's yeah. okay. No, no, no. You, you, you don't know. Thank God the world is saving, but I need to be a steward of my household. I can watch my son and daughter go to hell. I'm trying to evangelize the nation. So David comes back and he's got everything going. 
Got that six of the men that came to the store. Got that they want to kill him. Want to do all kinds of stuff with him. And so Daddy go out and and uh, he, he gets the plan of God. Go get him to recover all you know story. But then when they go to get the get the stuff back, uh, he gets there. Six of the men. So to get tired, and then we, we can't go any further. We can't go. We, we, we just we, we just got to sit down and stop. So four of the men go ahead and. Thank God for those. That's what parts you about. When you can't make a living, you push you up, you lift you up, you carry your part. We're here to bear each other the burden. God, we're here for each other. And so there he goes. And the four of the men, they all take their leg and come back, come back home. And now the time is to stuff. It's divided goods. And the four of the men said, no, no, those two of them who, who left behind, they can't get nothing about it. They didn't go with us. They got tired and weary. But the general said, no, we all share that. Oh, well, you didn't go to the front lines, oh, well, you didn't go to different regions, but you stayed, and you prayed, and you gave. Yeah. Oh, well, you would never experience a thing that, that the vision never see here, but, but you will also understand hey, that, that, that God will support him, and what his part is, so is my part. That's good right there. Yeah. I don't know, I, I wasn't in the boardroom, I, I wasn't there when everybody said no, but when they said yes, but, 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 but I was a silent partner with my funds when I began to sow into his life. So David said, no. So it's just part me that tell him about stuff. That's just part to go down in the battle. So this morning, I trust that you understand this. Two ship, two points out. I won't, I won't, I won't lay them all. Still ship about reliability, reliability, reliability. You need to be reliable. Please don't start and stop. The worst thing to a visionary is when the provision dries up. I know back home they got a, 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 a ministry going to build a church and he put up a sign on the property coming soon. Just say, well, a name, a name. Cow, jump on the moon, fellowship. <laughs> so now, Cow on the moon first, we got a sign coming soon. They had great intentions to come soon. And they bought the property. But now the provision drives up, people stop giving. Now Cow on the moon first has a sign that's been faded by the sun. Weeds all around them because no provisions. Somebody got excited in the beginning but have lost the zeal along the way. We cannot give up a few before we finish the goal. We gotta, we gotta stay focused, church. I, I believe this is an end time movement. I'm not much taller. I don't think really we got much time. I, I, I believe this thing is about over with. I, I don't want, I, I, I want to say some stuff that's a little political. I don't want to get over the political folks, give me that point. You talking about the government, you can't go on. <laughs> that won't happen to me. But in our country, in our country, and they grab you as a leg, it is so terrible. And I don't, I'm not going around the world talking about how bad our country is. Well, right now, we're in the limit of America. We're hurting from the top down. And all that they say about it is, we got, we got, we got a great economy. We got the lowest unemployment in history. And, and the black and brown, they have, they have more income than ever before. And all the people are looking at it is, we have a great economy, and black American unemployment is down. I mean, a few black folks who got a job working at a fast food restaurant with no benefits. And they all look at the other stuff that's behind the scenes, the undercover stuff that's happening in America. You okay? So I look at it, and I'm, 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 I'm trying, to, just trying to discern, God, what is it? What time are we in now? That, that, that we fought about the race out, we focus on the minor and forget about the majors. We have to get people got a job, thank God for that. But, but, but the, the moral fiber of our country is coming apart. No integrity. No integrity. I mean, we got people who say they know God and, and oh, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Okay, I'm I apologize. I apologize. Last point, 
stewardship by reliability. Comfort in twenty five nineteen says, Proverbs twenty five nineteen. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. He said, when you're not reliable, you're like a man with a bad tooth and a broken foot. Well, that's head to toe. He said, you messed up from the floor. He said, we can't, we can't trust you now. We, you're not reliable. You can you, 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 you have a plan. You have to amend it, but now you, you didn't follow through. That's bad. And then uh, uh, Proverbs 24, 10 says, if you faint and never press it in, your strength is small. If you faint and never press it in, your strength is small. Let's hold out. Let's hold out. And the last thing about stewardship I say is stewardship is about favorability. God favors the faithful. He said the faithful man shall allow blessings. God favors the faithful. I believe when you move faithful, God watches you and God bless you. You know, I feel good about this trip because we've proven ourselves faithful. Now God can reward your vision. You hear about it. <laughs> I, I said a word about it. Or I may fly my own jet back and just to tell you about how God blessed us.